Hi, you're watching Earth Sky Live. I'm Marcy Kern and I'm here with Earth Sky's Kelly Kaiser Witt. We're going to be discussing the upcoming lineup of six planets in the morning sky. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Marcy. Which six planets will be visible in the morning sky at the beginning of June and will it be visible all over the globe? Okay, so we have kind of two things to talk about here. It's one is what's in the sky and the other is what you can see in the sky. So let's start with the first part, like what's in the sky. And it's kind of cool to think about. That's kind of the coolest part about this is thinking about where the planets are. So the six planets, you probably know we have eight planets. Um, sorry, Pluto, Pluto got demoted. And there is possibly a planet nine, the size of Neptune way out in the solar system. And if you haven't heard about that yet, you should go to earthsky.org because just last week we have a new story with new evidence about planet nine. But those two don't count. So we're talking about, so we have our four inner planets, that's Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and then the four outer planets after the asteroid belt. So that's Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And Earth is the one you're standing on, so that's not part of the six. And the other one is Venus. Venus is just too close to the sun to see. But all the other planets are in a part of the morning sky that's pretty close together. So that's what's cool about this, because if you know how our planets were formed, they were formed with the sun way back billions of years ago, and we're all on the same plane. So if you look at the night sky, you will always find the planets and the moon and the sun along one line, which is a line we call the ecliptic. And the planets, they could be anywhere in this line because you know they all have their own orbits around the sun, but for this next few mornings, starting basically Friday morning, which is May 31st through the first five days of June, when you look in the morning sky, that's where the planets will be. And they could, you know, they could be back here, or they could be in the nighttime sky, they could be below the horizon from my point of view, like how the sun rises and sets, but they're not, they're gathering all together in the morning sky which I think is probably the coolest part of this event. Not so much the observing part of this event, although that's what's getting the most play in social media. I know, Marcy, you've probably seen this all over the internet also, right? Yeah, I, I see uh, internet stories. I see it on social media and people are so excited. And yeah, as we're going to discuss, it might be hard to see them all. Right, um, we have a graphic that our producer Natalia can put up to give you an idea of at least where they'll be. Maybe you won't be able to see them all, um, but there are some that you'll be able to see. And it also depends on where you live and what time you go out to look. So here's the first day, first morning, which is already Friday morning. So this is a good time to start because it'll give you an idea of where you should be looking because the moon on the morning of Friday is close to Saturn. Now where I live, I live farther north and the farther north you are, kind of the worse your experience will be. And the farther south you are, the better it'll be, including the Southern hemisphere has the best view. Um, but for me, the sunrise is like 5.30 in the morning um, I went out the other morning at 5 a.m. I was like, okay, I'm going to just at least see Saturn and Mars. I couldn't. At 5 a.m., it was already too bright in my sky. So I would have to get up at like 4.30 to see these planets. But if you get up early enough while it's still dark, you will see Saturn and Mars. But the problem is, so Neptune you just can't see Neptune anyway, even in the best of conditions because it's so dim and so far away. So you will need optical aid for Neptune. And then we have this trio of planets hovering near the morning sun rising. So Marcy told me that she did see Mercury. Mercury, was that just the other day, Marcy? That was this morning and it was fleeting. Um, it was, I looked both 30 and 20 minutes before the sunrise and it was probably just maybe three degrees, just, you know, maybe a little couple of fingers width above the northern eastern horizon. And it was fleeting. You just kind of see it and then it goes away. And I did peek out the door. You cannot see Mars and Saturn anymore. It 
this is sky is too bright. Yeah, so you may be able to see them some more than just say two, but not all at the same time. And so you should just start out, just count out Uranus altogether, because again, Uranus and Neptune are both ones that you really need optical aid to see. You need, you need binoculars. And with Uranus so close to the bright sunrise, you're just not going to see it. Um, and actually just a little hint, if you've never seen Uranus and you'd really like to, mark your calendar for July 15th. Because for my little tip for the best way to see Uranus, it's not when it's near the moon because the moon's too bright. It's not when it's like closest to us. It's when it's near another bright object that's easy to spot. So Uranus is near reddish Mars on July 15th. So we, you can find out more about that later in Earth Sky. We'll tell you more. But that's a good chance to see Uranus. For this event, just know that it's there. That's, that's about the best you can do for some of these is just to be happy that it's there. And sometimes it's just, even for me, if I look in the direction where I know Pluto is, of course I cannot see it. It's just kind of a cool thing. Like I know Pluto is right in that direction. And sometimes that's, that's enough. That's exciting enough. Um, so we have another slide. So I think, is there one for maybe June 2nd or 3rd? Um, so this, the moon, as it, as it moves, it's, it's what we call waning, which is growing thinner. And it's going to be moving toward that sunrise point because new moon is on, let's see, June 6th. So as the moon moves, it can help you figure out, okay, so in here it's June 2nd, the moon is near Mars. So that also help you figure out which planets you're looking at if you're not really experienced at spotting the planets. Um, and then eventually, the moon moves way down, so it's near these bright planets that maybe you'll be able to see through the dawn's light, but maybe you won't. Um, so on June 4th, that's what we have this great word called conjunction. So Jupiter and Mercury are in conjunction. That just means basically that they're very close together. So this appearance, the, the best day for those two planets is on June 4th. And it's pretty cool because the moon is nearby at the same time. One thing you can do to see them better, although like makes me nervous just saying it, is you can use binoculars to try. Um, and I did go out the other morning to try to see Mercury when I was up at 5 a.m. Now I knew I had a half an hour window before the sun would rise. But if you're putting binoculars to your eyeballs and looking toward the sunrise, you need to know when sunrise is because you can blind yourself. You can damage your eyes permanently if you catch that sun rising. So make sure if you do want to use binoculars to look for Mercury or Jupiter, you need to do it well before the sunrise. But it's really difficult because there's just a short window that they come up and then the sun comes up. So yeah, I, uh, kudos to, to Marcy for getting to see Mercury because I have not gotten to see that and I'm not a morning person, so I'm not sure I will see any of these coming up. Um, also, Marcy's um, husband is a astrophotographer. So that's something if, if maybe you know how to take photos of this guy. Um, Marcy, what do you think about people attempting to take photos of this event? Well, the, the planets uh, basically from you know, the eastern horizon through Saturn cover about over 70 degrees of the sky. So if you wanted to try to snapshot to catch the visible planets, uh, they're just going to look like stars. You know, it, it's possible if you have a telescope, obviously, you can, you know, get a close up of all of them. Uh, probably the uh, conjunction between Mercury and Jupiter might be a nice shot to try. But again, as, as you've already mentioned, you're competing with sunrise and you also risk the danger of like catching the sun through a telescope or binoculars. So other than maybe trying to catch a bright star by the moon as a snapshot, I don't know that this is probably something that people want to spend a lot of time taking picture of. And uh, um, I see we got a It's question. not even going to be a, pardon, yes. Sorry, I think my, my, thing cut up for a second. I, yeah, I see we got a question that someone said, if we can't see this, why are people making such a big deal about it? Exactly. Um, there are so many good 
observing events to see. Um, I think this one, it would be cool if it was dark enough in the sky to see it all, but you just can't. And a lot of people who write the stories that are out there aren't experienced observers. So they don't know that. They, they just maybe see it on their software or they see the planets together. And so they talk about it but they haven't actually ever observed it this time of day. Um, they just don't have that experience. It's still, like I said, it's still a cool event to think about because the planets could be anything, anywhere, but they're actually gathering together in the sky, um, which is, so that's kind of what to get excited about is that, you know, they're having a little family gathering. <laughs> and just keep in mind too, when I say like, you can see them near each other in the sky, they're not actually near each other. They're still in their orbits. They, it's just perspective wise to us, they look like they're close together, but they're still just doing their thing in their separate orbits in the sky. Um, yeah, the, the words conjunction and lineup and alignment, they're very clickable. So people see that opportunity to get clicks. Um, and that's one of the reasons that this has become such a, a, a big buzzword right on the, in the internet. Like they're talking about it just because it's it's an exciting concept, but this particular one is not the best for observers. And, and I would say uh, these aren't necessarily rare, but just some of them are more spectacular than others. Uh, like the uh, December, 2021 conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn. Those were both very bright, very noticeable. You know, people that don't even look at the sky saw them. And, you know, a lot of times if like the really bright planet Jupiter or Venus is by a crescent moon, you know, that catches people eye, people's eyes. But some of these, you know, like Kelly said, you know, unless you're really an experienced observer, it's more the thrill of knowing it's there, but you can't really see it. And Marcy, do you plan to watch? Do you plan to go look? I uh, I wake up a lot during the night, so I do get up and look like, okay, I do want to go see, you know, I like to catch the moon when it's by uh, the planets, like on Friday morning, the moon's going to be near Saturn, and on June 2nd, the moon will be near Mars, so if I wake up, I, I do go look, but I don't go out of my way to get up and look, and I do like to catch the planets on the horizon, so I have a fantastic east, eastern view from my house, we're kind of on a hill, and there's really just open space for miles. So I have a great Eastern horizon right now. So it's always kind of fun for me to try to see it. In the evening planet, I see nothing but houses. So an evening conjunction, I'm always going to miss. But they're fun. You know, they're fun to know they're out there and, and to go chase them down and see what you can see. And I'm, I'm more of the evening watcher because I'm just not a morning person. So one thing you can think about when you're looking at the evening sky is there aren't any planets in it right now. Uh, lots of times there are, there are, you know, multiple planets, but right now they're all in the morning sky. So if you're gonna go out and, and even the moon is in the morning sky. So right now, if you go out in the evening and you look at the sky, you're not seeing anything from inside our solar system. You're seeing stars and beyond, which is just another cool idea to think about. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not the best observing event. We have lots of great observing events um, coming up. So you can always go to earthsky.org and we have like our great summer meter showers. Um, so there are lots of things to observe. This one is not the best for observers, especially if you're not a morning person, if you live farther north, if you're not really experienced at seeing tiny points of light in a brightening sky. It's more like fun to think about than it is to actually observe. That, that's very true. Uh, we do have Mercury will be emerging in the evening sky towards the end of the month. And again, that will be best from the Southern Hemisphere. And then Venus will be coming um, back in the night sky late July, early August. And of course, Venus is always a delight because it always seems like such a beacon compared to, to even Jupiter, which is a really bright planet as well. So there's always something fun to see out there. Yep. Yeah, so we hope that, you know, you can come find some other great events. And, you know, if you do see some of those, let us know or send us photos. We have a photo page at Earth Sky, our community photo. So we'd love to see if you get any images. And see what you experienced. Any further um, tips or suggestions we have for people? Yeah, I think just, you know, 
if you want to get up and see it, be prepared to get up quite early. Um, know when the sun is rising in case you want to use binoculars. Don't look any time around the actual sunrise because I don't want you to hurt your eyes. Um, and just keep it, keep in touch because we'll have some better events coming up that are even better to watch. Definitely. The end of the month, there's going to be Jupiter, Mars, and the Pleiades all together in the morning sky. So that's going to be a sight to see. And Jupiter will be higher, so easier to see by then. Yep. And we are always here on Mondays um, with live streams. Sometimes it's about what we're doing right now, talking about what's in the sky. Sometimes it's about science news or earth science news, um, astronomy news. So you can always see us on Mondays at 12.15 for the next live stream.